southern Zaire, an unruly force red-eyed from smoking marijuana. These are neither government soldiers nor members of the rebel army of Laurent Kabila now sweeping the country. Remnants of rebels from the past, they're reviving calls to make their province of Shaba an independent nation. We want to go to Lumbumbashi today, says this general. These rebels took the border town of Kasumbalesa ahead of Mr. Kabila's troops. Zairean soldiers laid down their arms, they said. But the younger generation seemed undisciplined and poorly trained. The return of order, in time to put on an official welcome for the new rebel authorities. The crowd wasn't sure who it was welcoming, Kabila's forces or the rival separatists. If the band was nervous, it tried not to show it. This instrument was worn with use. Even the drum majorettes had been told to strut their stuff, which they did, Zairean style. The arrival of dignitaries brought hints of confrontation. A mayor from a nearby town and a retired general who'd fought for Shabba's secession in the 60s. Both were here with a different message. General Mufu was the first to take the floor. His bodyguards provoking a worried reaction. The rally appeared to mark the broadening of Mr. Kabila's alliance. His soldiers fated as youthful heroes. But when General Mufu bowed to a traditional blessing, Mr. Kabila's troops were standoffish. There was a wary handshake between Zaya's old and new rebel forces. The band struck a rusty tune, the anthem of independence from Belgium in 1960, which General Mufu refused to sing. Un seul pays. Il faut qu'il y ait un seul pays, pas deux. It must be one country, not two. Thus the Republic Congo, not two. Because you see a crowd that awaits this. If the people here didn't wait for that, they wouldn't have come here. And they've waited to be freed. The rival occupation of this border town ended only hours later, when Kabila's crimson berries killed individual members of the separatist group after they'd failed to surrender their guns. Two days later, the bodies of mine workers who joined them, collected from the streets and taken to a morgue, where relatives openly grieved. If this swift action by Mr. Kabila's army was intended as a warning, its message was brutally clear. Armed defiance will be crushed. Catherine Bond, CNN, Kasumbalesa, Zaire.